Are you ready? Here is every Marvel announcement from the Disney Investor Day. Kevin Feige closed out the show with lots of goodies. So we're going to go through them, uh, not in the order that he presented them, but the order that, well, I'm going to put the biggest stories up front, but they're, they're all pretty big news, uh, and share my thoughts. There are chapter times down below, uh, and I'm going to be doing uh, videos like this uh, focusing on each division's announcements from the big day. All right, let's get started. So I think the biggest headline was the Fantastic Four movie being confirmed. Oh boy, although, while I was happy not to see Peyton Reed up there, I think like Kevin Feige got someone who was not that much different, and that's John Watts, uh, who has directed the Spider-Man movies for Sony. Uh, I really enjoy the Spider-Man movies, but with the exception of the Mysterio sequence, I don't think I've ever watched a Spider-Man movie and, or the new ones and been like, wow, that's well directed. So, and I also feel that John Watts is very, very Marvel generic in his style. And I prefer a little flavor. I think that the most effective Marvel movies are the ones that have a little bit of something extra contributed by the directors. Um, the Russos, uh, Taika Waititi, Ryan Coogler, uh, although the Spider-Man Spider -Man movies have been very successful, thanks to great casting, so let's see who they cast in Fantastic Four. Uh, and also, the other thing that makes me nervous about John Watts being the director is that, you know, Spider-Man was so kid-centric, you know, teenage-centric. I will be very upset if the Fantastic Four are not fully-fledged adults. Uh, you know, the ultimate Fantastic Four were aged down, um, and sometimes Hollywood likes to do that. I do not want to see that for Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four is supposed to be a family. Um, I, I just, you know, and they already did two very, you know, like 20-something casts already. I think to make this distinct, I would really love to see an adult cast. I know that everybody wants to see John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, and sure, that'll be fun. But my favorite casting to date has been, you know, a long time ago, people wanted to see George Clooney and Charlize Theron as Reed Richards and Sue Storm. And I think that would have been just wonderful. So something more along those lines. Heck, they could still cast uh, Clooney and Theron today, and it would be fantastic. So let's, I think we need to see more. But I'm very excited to get the Fantastic Four on the board. And as we all suspected, they're an easier thing for Feige to do because they tie in so well with the MCU as it currently exists. Whereas the X Men, you know, you got to do a lot to establish those characters. All right, next, the next big headline Black Panther, T'Challa will not be recast. As I told you, this was something I reported to you already, and Kevin Feige confirmed it. I know that some of you are very upset about this, um, but I think you have to understand the decision. And I told you, as I also reported, there will still be a male Black Panther in the mix. Shuri will take on the mantle, although Letitia Wright, let's see if she keeps her social media deactivated. But I think that my. I'm thinking that it's M'Baku. I just heard there will be another male Black Panther. We'll see if it's M'Baku, but I think that makes the most sense. Uh, and, you know, while Marvel has said they won't be using a digital double, I believe that they mean they will not be doing scenes with a digital double doing acting, like close-ups and stuff like you've seen in some other films. I've told you, I told you when I first reported it that I heard the digital double will be there to, to show T'Challa being taken out of the equation at the beginning of the movie. Maybe he takes his mask off one time, you see him, he doesn't say anything. Uh, it's gonna be tricky, but as I've also reported, um, well, this is my thoughts, I feel that I have incredible faith in Ryan Coogler to, to handle the situation. But they gave him a little more time as the movie's been moved back to July 8th, 2022. They moved a lot of films, We'll talk about that momentarily. Uh, then also, I think the other really big headline to come out of the um, of the presentation is that WandaVision, Spider-Man 3, and Doctor Strange 2 are connected, and that's been confirmed by Kevin Feige. I've been telling you that for months, but now you know it for sure. Uh, Sony, you know, a lot of you wanted to see some Spider-Man 3 announcements. Sony gets to make those announcements. Kevin Feige, I think, revealed as much as he could. By, and I think that's why he also did it so quickly. He was like, and by the way, Spider-Man 3 is connected to Doctor Strange 2. We're like, we done new. But really, you know, so that's, that's uh, those are, I think, were the biggest, most, uh, the biggest headlines to come out. Now let's focus on Disney Plus, which is just so many series that he announced or gave more details on, and then we'll switch our focus to the films. WandaVision. 
They should have released that trailer earlier in the day at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I think it would have gotten more attention. It got plenty of attention as is. But, you know, Wanda, her show is right around the corner. I think she deserved to have the earlier part of the day just for her. Uh, and then it would have gotten everybody excited about the upcoming presentation. She's going to go, she's, she's going to be mad. Clearly is this new trailer revealed, uh, someone's messing with her and she's going to be very upset. And as I've reported to you, I'll, I'll reiterate it here. I'm hearing she will be the villain of Spider-Man three and Dr. Strange two, and that she's out of control and needs, you know, just like in the comic, she, she, you know, she's doing bad stuff, but we can't be upset with her. Uh, but she still has to be stopped. Uh, it's going to be great. All right, then Falcon and Winter Soldier, release date, March 19th. That's, you know, I told you I heard the Snyder Cut will be coming out in March. That's really uncool to put those two against each other, although it would make sense as to why Feige has decided to release Falcon and Winter Soldier before Black Widow, even though the Elena Belova cameo preferably would have come after the movie where she's introduced. I thought this was the weakest trailer. And I saw at least one person said, oh, it's cause you're a, you're a woman, Grace. This is, this is for guys. That's like the dumbest thing I ever heard. I just thought that it just didn't have the same, it looked a little bit Marvel generic. Some people love Marvel generic to be fair, right? But I, as I said, like things with a little more flavor, which is why I preferred the WandaVision and Loki trailers. Uh, then speaking of Loki, that's now May 2021. That'll uh, come out the same month as uh, Black Widow. It was the, I think the real surprise here was just how good the show looks. I mean, it just looks incredible. It came out of nowhere as a really hot ticket. Uh, then the Nick Fury show was confirmed as Secret Invasion, which I also reported to you. Uh, I told you that was going to be that what that show is about. I believe I was I was the first to tell you, and I believe I'm the only person who's told you that. And I also told you it will lead into Captain Marvel 2. And Kevin Feige said Ben Mendelsohn's Talos will be in the mix here as well. I'm so excited to see Secret Invasion get started. That's going to lay the groundwork for Secret Invasion. And then it'll blow up in the movies. Probably the end of the episode, it'll reveal like just how high up the scrolls have infiltrated. But Secret Invasion is one of the best comic book events I've ever read. And I'm so excited for you know the mainstream audience to get to experience it. If they do it right. And I think Feige will. Uh, She-Hulk, Tatiana, Tatiana Maslany com confirmed. I think she looks ridiculous going around saying she wasn't She-Hulk. She should have just said no comment because it just is like, what did we go through all that for? And I told you, I heard that she, I, when you guys were asking me what's going on, I told you from my sources that she was She-Hulk. And as you can she see, she is. Uh, Mark Ruffalo confirmed, as well as Tim Roth's abomin abomination from the Edward Norton movie. And again, as I've been telling you, I heard that She-Hulk will be a Hulk-centric show with a lot of Hulks showing up or being introduced from the comics. Kevin Feige also said it's going to be a legal drama with a lot of superhero cases. That's right out of her recent comic. That comic did not sell well, but it was phenomenal. I highly recommend you, go, you check it out because clearly, just like the Hawkeye comic, they're basing the Disney Plus series a lot on that run. It was amazing, and as I told you, I heard that Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock is in talks to be on the She-Hulk show, so I'm sure they would like to see her have to face him in court. Oh, it's gonna be great. I can't wait to see what kind of cases she has. Moon Knight, they said it's gonna be an Indiana Jones type show, which is uh, very different than what the character is like in the comics, so I'm curious to see what they're doing there. They did not confirm Oscar Isaac, as Moon Knight. Uh, I told you when he was cast as Solid Snake that it was likely that he couldn't do both. Uh, some of you said, why not, Grace? Uh, you know, Harrison Ford was Indiana Jones and Han Solo simultaneously. That was like, you know, early days. It was before you had these like franchise wars. And I don't think Kevin Feige wants his, uh, you know, actors doing another major franchise for a rival studio simultaneously. So I, I told you I didn't think he could do both and it looks like he's not going to. I mean, again, we could be surprised, but if Oscar Isaac was in talks, how is his deal not closed for this presentation, right? Kamala Khan, late 2021 is the release date. Uh, we got a sizzle reel, but it's kind of hard to focus on Kamala Khan, uh, that show, when you have Fix Ms. Marvel trending for very legitimate reasons. And I'm still not totally seeing Amon Volani. I mean, in the sizzle reel, they were like, it was unanimous. We all picked you. So I have faith in their creative choice, but I so far have not seen it. I'm like, okay. I'm glad you're all so excited about this, but you still haven't convinced me. But it's early days for that show. Then Ironheart, uh, Dominique Thorne uh, has, has been cast in that, as that character. The way Kevin Feige described the show is it's the most advanced suit of armor since Iron Man, which would maybe say that it's more advanced. I don't like doing this pitting men against women stuff. It never works out. And I would not have described the show in that manner. 
I would not have described the show in that manner. I think it's a very bad idea. And I would also sadly like to point out that this character has never worked. This character has never connected with an audience. I mean, I'm sure there's some of you who are like, I like Ironheart. The book doesn't sell. The character never shows up anywhere. It just hasn't worked out. So I hope that Kevin Feige can fix it. Uh, yeah, I, and I, I don't know about the casting of Dominique Thorne, to be honest with you. I think that it's tough to cast female characters. You have to get character actors that appeal to both sexes, multiple groups, and I don't... I have the same reservations about Dominique Thorne as I do about Iman Volani, but I'm excited to see what these, what the, what Marvel saw in both actresses in casting them. But as I told you, I've been telling you this for so long, the Young Avengers are coming. So you've got Ms. Marvel, you've got uh, Ironheart. Uh, also, we're going to be talking in the movie section. Uh, you know, uh, Ms. America. She's she's confirmed, uh, even though we all knew it. Uh, they recast Cassie Lang, uh, in uh, you know, in the Ant Man and the Wasp three. So you know, all the, everybody's coming. Haley Steinfeld was finally confirmed as Kate Bishop. The Young Avengers are. I mean, you can see the kids, Wanda's kids, in her trailer just, just a little bit. Uh, they're coming. I've been telling you this for a very long time, and so here they are. Uh, Armor Wars. Don Cheadle will have to handle the fact that the Stark tech has gotten into the wrong hands. But I gotta tell you, I don't understand why this isn't part of the Ironheart show. I mean, I don't, I don't think the Iron Man world can support two shows, to be honest with you. I would think Ironheart could use the assist from War Machine, and I, I, it just seems ridiculous to me that they're two separate shows. I thought that he maybe said Armor Wars was animated, but I couldn't see any confirmation on that. But I don't know. Let's Again, let's see how it looks. Then they're doing a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which will come out in 2022. It's so far away. And it will film during Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. That's very smart. They're like, hey, while you're on set, why don't you guys also film this holiday special? I mean, the ways to think of creating Disney Plus content while shooting the movies, while you have everyone there, is very, very clever. And expect to probably see more of that. They're also going to do an I Am Groot series of shorts with Baby Groot. I just hope it's better than Forky. I hope it's for all ages rather than for the smallest. I would even think small children would be offended by I Am Forky. I mean, uh, Forky facts or whatever it is. Um, I tried to watch one episode and I was like, I don't even think this is right. I think you're misinforming children. So I don't know. I'm sure some of you will be like, I like that show a lot, Grace. Well, I'm glad someone's enjoying it. I don't see anyone talking about it, though. All right, so anyway, uh, and also, is there room for Baby Groot after Grogu? <laughs> we'll see how if Grogu ever gets, gets aged up and uh, makes that no longer a problem. And then finally, you know, so Haley Steinfeld finally confirmed, and then What If is coming out sometime in summer 2021. Now let's look at the movies. Ant-Man and the Wasp will be called Quantumania. Uh, that's kind of fun. It doesn't look so great, but it's fun to say. You know, the word looks a little confusing, but it is fun to say quantum mania. Quantum mania! I just love Paul Rudd so much, and I really like Evangeline Lilly. I hope that she finally stops having to be a wet blanket of a character. So I'm excited for them to try this again, goddammit! Uh, everyone's returning. I'm so happy that Michelle Pfeiffer will get a chance to maybe do a little bit more this time, and I, I really do like Michael Douglas in these films. Cassie Lang, as we all suspected would happen, has been recast with Katherine Newton from Freaky. That's a big deal for her, and she's actually a very good Cassie Lang. Jonathan Majors, confirmed as, uh, uh, as uh, Kang, and also there's so many Kang references in the Loki show, so this is, this is going to be good. Uh, then the, some movies were pushed back. Uh, Captain, uh, again, Captain Marvel 2 will not come out November 11th, 2022. And as I said, it's going to be coming out of the Secret Invasion television show. It's going to feature, I thought this was nice, all three uh, characters who are, you know, in the Captain uh, Marvel space, Carol Danvers, Monica Rambeau, uh, and Kamala Khan. I think that'll, that'll be, I'm very much looking forward to seeing that. That's, I think, going to be really nice if they do it right. It could just be like really bad, but I hope they do it right. I have tremendous faith in Nia DaCosta, who's been brought on to fix this thing as the director, and she's already pretty fun with her Twitter account where she said, you know, tag me, you cowards, and, I, I, and she got a lot of likes for that. So that sense of humor uh, makes me feel really good. Thor Love and Thunder, this is a shame. It got pushed to May 6, 2022. That's a great release date, kicking off the summer. But at the same time, I feel very bad that a movie called Thor Love and Thunder doesn't get to open around Valentine's Day. That was a really nice tie-in. Uh, Christian Bale has been confirmed as Gore the God Butcher. Some people guessed that. I was hoping for Dario uh, uh, Agar from Roxxon, although the Roxxon stuff seems to be over in the Loki show. But uh, 
I don't know. It's probably going to be a motion capture performance considering that character. I never liked Gore the God Butcher. Some people love Gore the God Butcher. I was always like, eh. I mean, he comes into the Jane Foster storyline. Well, he starts out in his own story with Thor, which ran for like such a long time. I was like, Jason Aaron, wrap this up already. Because I wasn't particularly enjoying it. Um, although I guess there's some interesting things about believing in gods and being let down by the gods, which, you know, maybe that's what attracted Christian Bale and Taika Waititi to the character. But anyway, he came back to fight Jane Foster and there was like conversation about gods there again. Uh, but that's the end of the Jane Foster storyline. I'm very concerned about doing the Jane Foster storyline justice. It's, you know, she has cancer. It's a really great story. It's just a, fa a fab, I mean, a lot of people were like, oh, Lady Thor, and just dismissed it as gender bending for the sake of political correctness. But it was a beautiful story. Jason Aaron just wrote such a good Thor, so good. Um, that I, I hope it's not just made like a B storyline in this movie. I, I'm very nervous about it. Taika Waititi has a very good track record, so I'm going to have faith in him, but he's making me nervous. Then Black Widow kept its release date and being a theatrical release for May, although we'll see what the pandemic looks like at that time. And Shang-Chi also has kept its release date of July 2021. Uh, nothing really new was announced for that film. So those are all the Marvel announcements. Uh, the, the Marvel, the MCU seems as bold and as exciting as ever. Uh, oh, and they mentioned Eternals, but they were like, yeah, Eternals is coming out. So that was kind of weird that they didn't have anything to show there. Uh, that's a, a November 2021. Uh, release. That is weird, isn't it? Ah, all right. Kevin Feige's like, I have too much to promote, even for myself. All right, so what were your favorite announcements? What do you think of all these developments? Share your thoughts down below. Stay tuned for my other videos about different divisions at Disney. What an empire. Uh, and subscribe so you don't miss any of them. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos that are available right now.